This headset has so-called light field displays, which can do two pretty mind-blowing things. First, they can simulate lenses. The company built them into a vision test prototype that allows someone like me who wears glasses to look into a box and see various digital lens simulations and simply select the one that looks the sharpest. After a couple of minutes, the machine told me what prescription I needed using just a display and some software. And if they built this into perhaps a VR headset, I could use that without having to put glasses or contacts on at all. But second, the display can also show real 3D with actual depth. And usually I'm not too excited about that when it happens in a cinema or on a TV, but in smart glasses, that makes all the sense in the world. Here's a demo that we shot with a camera through a transparent version of this light field display. And you can see an ice cream cone rendered close to the camera around where the hand is, plus then a Ferris wheel that at two meters is about as far back as me back there. As we move the focus of the camera, you'll note that the digital objects come in and out of focus just like the real ones. Both your eyes and the camera can pick up on this, which shows that they have real 3D depth. And you might be thinking, hey, isn't that somehow normal? Don't old VR and AR displays already somehow show you depth? And the answer is that no, actually not like this. Regular VR and AR devices work just like this old Google Cardboard where you strap a phone to your face. The displays actually use flat 2D panels with no depth to them and just a couple of lenses in front. They do show two slightly different views of the world to your two different eyes, which tricks your brain into thinking that there's some depth there, but there isn't. It's just two flat images. To demonstrate, here's a comparison shot through a Microsoft HoloLens on the left, which uses a flat display, versus one shot through a light field display on the right, which has depth. Both devices are showing the exact same 3D scene with three different planets that are each at a different distance. One planet is close at around this piece of paper that marks 25 centimeters, while the other one is far away, closer to where you can see me in the background. Looking at our light field display, as you change the focus of the camera, you can see the focus gradually shifting on both the real world and the digital objects correctly. And mind you, it's not the display that is blurring some objects, it's the camera focusing on different parts of the image. You can do the same with your eye as well, and the virtual objects really behave like physical objects would, coming in and out of focus depending on where you look. Meanwhile, with the flat display of the HoloLens, all three planets are either simultaneously in focus or out of focus depending on your camera settings. There is no gradual shift, and the digital world cannot match reality at all. You can see this especially clearly when the hand is completely blurred, but the planet, which should be right next to it, is fully in focus. Things just don't align. This misalignment between digital objects and the real world around them that you can still see in AR glasses is one of the things that makes those headsets really difficult to pull off very well. And this lack of true depth is one of the things that makes people actually sick in VR. You don't immediately consciously notice, but your brain definitely knows that something doesn't add up. Now, you might have heard of light field technology because it's also used in Google Beam, the new and super expensive video calling device that Google has developed, which apparently makes people feel like they're talking to a real 3D avatar of someone that they're calling, all without having to wear glasses. So this technology finally seems to be gaining some momentum after being stuck in labs for many, many years, and I actually got to try some of it myself. Disclaimer. Serial gave me a tour of their office and their lab in Switzerland. That said, no money exchanged hand between us, I paid for my own travel, and Serial never asked for and also never received any editorial control over any of my output. Instead, this video was sponsored by Nebula and people like you whose subscriptions make it possible for me to travel and bring you high quality videos like these. Okay, before we get to the AR devices, I wanted to show you this vision care device because I thought this was really cool. What you're looking at is a white box in which there are displays for your eyes and we're filming those with various cameras through their lenses. You can see the real-time output of one of those cameras to this monitor and on the right, you can also see a computer which essentially runs the vision care software. You might know that in current vision care tests, someone like an eye doctor puts various physical lenses in front of your eye and then they ask you whether you see well with them or not. Well, this machine does the same thing just digitally using three different types of exercises. First, you try to read letters that get smaller and smaller. Second, you look at a series of black and white boxes where you have to select the one that looks the sharpest to you. And third, you're shown various 3D scenes where you have to set the focus until various parts become sharp. All of these scenes digitally simulate lenses, and what's wild is that a digital screen can of course simulate many different lenses simultaneously. Each of these boxes has a different diopter, for example, and you can just pick the one that looks the sharpest to your eye. During this time, you're leaning against this box, and you do all your selections using yourself using a game controller. It's kind of like playing a game. As you make your choices, the machine gets better and better at understanding what correction you need, and so by the end, it should put out an accurate reading, and it should also be able to show you full scenes that look perfectly sharp to you. Up to five diopters, that is. Now, somebody who's been wearing glasses for the last 20 years or so, seeing a display actually mimic my own glasses was a pretty mind-blowing experience, but sadly, things were not quite perfect. 
While the display did look much better to my eye than it does to the camera, like for example, there wasn't nearly as much flickering, plus these grid lines and other artifacts were also not quite as obvious, they were definitely still visible at times. Also, I got a more or less accurate reading on the machine on one of my eyes, but the other one was off by about one diopter. Now, the display for now can only go up to like five diopters, and my eyes are like right at the edge of that, so maybe it's something related to that. And also, this is still a prototype, so things can still improve, but yeah, not quite perfect yet. Anyway, what's exciting is that Serial actually partnered with a big lens maker and an eye care company, which I'm not allowed to name for some strange reason, but it's one of the very big and obvious ones, which you might be able to guess yourself. They told me they want to bring this product to market together, so that's an encouraging sign that this is not just vaporware. Now, before we move on, it's important to understand that Serial, both in the vision care devices and AR, is just a component maker. The only thing that they want to make is the display and all the drivers and everything that goes into actually using that display. Everything else around that display Play, the customer, whoever it ends up being, will do themselves. The vision care company will presumably make their own box and software, and if an AR company like Meta, for example, wants to buy these for their headsets, they'll then design their own cameras and operating system and chips and everything else that they want. So everything that you see on these prototype headsets here, except the displays, is a placeholder, 3D printed and held together by glue and prayers. Now this version shows us what just the display and their various related bits look like today, and you can see that for now it consists of three main parts. First, this is a display driver, which we'll come back to later. Second, and more importantly, this is a projector in the stem of the glasses. This projects an image onto the lens of the glasses, and indeed, if you look from the correct angle from the front, you can even briefly see a little bit of light being projected from the stem of the glasses. Meanwhile, on the lens itself is the third element, which is a holographic film. On this prototype, you can directly see that for now they're applying these as stickers, and the little circle on top is the holographic part that is basically a special mirror that reflects the projections back into your eye. If you've seen my video on transparent displays, you might remember that some other smart glasses, like the Focals by North, used a very similar setup, and the core logic is basically the same here. So, so far this is pretty standard stuff. The image gets projected from the stem of your glasses onto the lens, and then it gets bounced back into your eye. But then here comes the twist. Literally. Take a look at this shot of the eyepiece. In it, you can see the so-called eye box, where you can usually see the image, and on it, you might recognize the same planet with the little rocket ship that I've already shown you earlier. But then, once I move the focus of my camera, you can see that what appeared to be one image actually gets generated using something like 30 projections, and your eye just combines these into a final scene. So what do we need all of these different projections for? Well, each of these actually shows you the same image, just from a slightly different perspective. Your eye then combines all of these into one image that it thinks has real depth. Here's the shortest way that I can explain it. This is the human eye. It has a lens through which light enters and the retina at the back where light receptors actually perceive what you're seeing. Imagine that in front of the eye there is a butterfly somewhere close and the tree somewhere further back. Now also imagine that we view the world only through two tiny pinholes in front of our eye, one on the top and one on the bottom. Light rays from both the butterfly and the tree pass through both pinholes through the lens and land on your retina. Your eye can then change the shape of its lens to bend the incoming light waves. When it's bent so that the two images of the butterfly overlap exactly, the butterfly appears sharp and is now in focus, which simultaneously leads to the tree not overlapping and therefore appearing out of focus. But change the shape of the lens again until the tree images overlap, and now that is in focus and sharp, while the butterfly is now out of focus. Your eye can use this information to perceive depth. So if you projected a digital scene with the correct perspective at the correct point of your eye, you would also see an image that has real depth even with two points. Of course, the more pinholes or the more viewpoints that you add, the more convincing the effect actually becomes, and so Serial has built various versions that have about 24 to 30 something of them. Each of these pinholes projects the same 3D scene, just from a slightly different perspective where all the objects are shifted relative to each other a tiny bit. And this is enough to trick your brain or even your camera into seeing images which appear to have real depth. I don't have a way to verify this, but they claim that they were able to do these perspective shifts with only a small calculation overhead, and what's even more fun is that all of these are actually done with one one single projector and a MEMS mirror. That is this tiny guy which is a little electronically controlled mirror that can very rapidly change its orientation. The projector can output up to 8000 images per second that the MEMS mirror then rapidly directs to the various pinholes fast enough to actually trick your brain that it's just looking at a final video with about 240 frames per second. How insanely cool is that? Like every time I make a video about AR and VR tech, somehow it's the most crazy thing I've ever heard and also nobody seems to know or care about any of it. Anyway, that's how the tech basically works. Now, is any of this actually coming to real products anytime soon? 
well, it's complicated. I definitely see the Vision Care product being an immediately obvious good use case if they manage to refine it a bit further. Now, as for smart glasses, I'm a bit more hesitant. On the cheap end, they're really simple smart glasses like those from Meta Ray-Bans or the upcoming Android XR platform for Google definitely don't need this complex of a display. Those just show little heads-up displays with a little bit of text and weather where everything being flat is completely fine. But on the other extreme, Lightfield definitely seems to make sense in high-end headsets. Think in the military, where combatants want to see complex information while their hands are busy, or surgeons who would have similar needs. At least initially, these are the areas that Serial is targeting. That makes a lot of sense, and we'll see if they can make a product that is actually polished enough for these markets. Because as cool as these displays already are, there's also clearly still work that needs to be done. For example, remember that this part here is a display driver that we'll get back to later? Yeah, for now, that is essentially a whole computer using an FPGA. This whole thing will have to get miniaturized into a single tiny chip, which is what display drivers usually are. That is definitely doable, but making a fully custom chip is a lot of work, it costs millions of dollars, and it's just one of the many, many things Serial still has to do. Other things include fixing their holographic films. It's cool that you can stick them onto existing lenses, so someone could use their own vision correction lenses underneath, for example. And I also really like that the actual holographic air Area was barely visible to the naked eye, but all the stickers on the prototypes looked pretty fragile and already damaged. And then there are also limitations that are kind of just inherent to the design. Like, for example, the projection system and the holographic film and everything has to be perfectly aligned for your eye. Otherwise, it's not good. So that means custom fittings and loads of fiddling with knobs. Now, the team I met was very honest and obviously aware of their current limitations. Also, the team consists of really smart people, including loads of PhDs and people who worked on, for example, the Intel glasses and also Magic Leap. And so they seem to have the right people to tackle these challenges. And I wish them the best. Now, I put a lot of effort into making sure that my videos are original, informative, and also reasonably accurate. But increasingly, my YouTube recommendations are full of AI slop that clearly has no aspirations for being accurate. I absolutely hate that I have to mistrust everything that I see on the internet by default now, and if you do as well, I think you'll really love Nebula, which by definition only features high-quality creators making a real effort. All of us on Nebula are the kinds of creators who would, for example, actually do the legwork to go to Switzerland and properly research an obscure display technology. While Nebula doesn't outright forbid any and all use of AI ever, it does have an explicit policy to not feature any low-effort AI slop at all, and instead we're doubling down on what is basically the opposite of low-effort nonsense. Nebula is funding creators to do even more ambitious work than they would be able to do otherwise, and we call these works Nebula Originals. Take 17 Pages, for example, which is not only a fantastic documentary covering one of the biggest cases of scientific fraud, including the Secret Service, Nobel laureates, and more, but it even included Nebula building a custom streaming feature to kind of enable the twist of the show. I can't tell you what that feature is without spoiling things, but it's the kind of thing that's only possible once we have our own platform. I've also made dozens of bonus videos exclusive to the platform and even a whole Nebula original series called Technorama Myself. Plus, of course, all of this comes with no ads, no shady tracking, etc. So if you want more and better videos from creators who actually care instead of the random lottery that the rest of the internet appears to be turning into, then consider subscribing to Nebula and supporting us. You can also get a big discount, which brings the price down to just $36 a year instead of the usual $60 you'd get when you sign up using a generic link. That is just $3 a month and a pretty big discount, so be sure to use my link go.nebula.tv slash techaltar or scan the QR code on screen to sign up, and if you hate ongoing subscriptions, we even have a lifetime option that you can subscribe to using that link. And once you have a subscription, you can even share that with a friend using our guest passes feature, so you can actually watch your favorite shows with your friends. Nice. So check out the links and I'll see you over on Nebula.